How's it going everyone? This is High Yield MCAT and today we're going to be talking about an equation that is probably medium yield but still shows up on the double AMC content outline. Now if you have no idea what that document is, feel free to click in the upper right hand corner of this video to see a document released by the double AMC that covers every single MCAT content area. Now let's get a little bit into Poissé's Poissé's law. Sorry, that French is a bit difficult for me to pronounce. But the equation that you want to memorize is this one right here. And most importantly, we want to know what the variable, variable Q stands for. And that Q is going to be flow rate. Now, flow is measured in units of volume over time. And more specifically, this is most commonly going to be denoted with meters cubed over seconds. So flow rate is not the same thing as a linear speed or velocity of flow, as you may have seen in an equation where Q equals AV. Q is still our flow rate, but V is going to be the linear velocity of the flow that we're looking at. So don't get Q and V mixed up. Make sure you know what they're asking for in the question. Now, let's move on to R. R is quite simply the radius of the closed pipe that we're going to be looking at with Poisset's law. So Poisset's law assumes that we're going to be looking at some sort of closed pipe system. So this could be a blood vessel, for example, something um, that you might see as a common example on the MCAT. So R quite simply is the radius, of course, in units of length, and most commonly specifically found in SI unit of meter. Now delta P is all one variable, despite it having two characters, the delta, Greek letter, and the P. And that symb simply means a pressure gradient. Another way we could write this is maybe one pressure minus the other pressure. This will be sort of the impetus or the reason why the fluid is moving from one place to another. It's going to flow from a place of high pressure to a place of low pressure. This is a ubiquitous physics concept that we'll see all across medicine, specifically, for example, uh, with blood flow, but also things like our lungs. Our lungs expand our volume and decrease the pressure, allowing air from outside of our body to go from a place of high pressure to low pressure inside of the lungs, which is how we inhale O2 and get that to our tissues. But I digress. So a pressure gradient is going to be measured in units, of course, of pressure, which can be broken down into units of force over area. So this can also be written, of course, as newtons over meters squared, which is equivalent to the Pascal unit. Now let's go to the denominator. Eight is simply a constant. And then we get to the Greek letter eta, which sort of looks like this extended N. Now eta is a measure of viscosity, we won't go over this too much, but Poisset's law does not assume that the fluid is ideal, an ideal fluid that has no viscosity. Poisset's law does account for viscosity, and viscosity's unit is pressure times time. Or more specifically, commonly we'll see in pascals times seconds. And we could write that as newtons divided by meter squared times seconds. Now finally, we have the variable L, which is the length of our pipe. And quite simply, that's going to be measured in units of length, which is our basic SI unit of meter. Now, while we don't have to assume that the fluid is ideal with Poisset's law, we do have to make one assumption, and that is that the flow of the fluid that we're looking at is laminar. Now, I think it's easiest to understand what laminar flow means in terms of the etymology of the word laminar. So lamina basically means sort of a sheet or layer. So think of laminating perhaps a project that you've done uh, in school back in the day. So you're putting a sheet of plastic around the paper. So lamina means some sort of sheet or layer. And laminar flow means that the layers of water that are flowing through are not interfering with each other. In other words, they're not turbulent. Now, turbulent flow is when those layers of water are 
interacting with each other and creating little eddies. So let's say laminar flow would be pushing maybe uh, a soccer ball across a pool and the water flows around it nicely like this. And we're moving to the right here. But let's say we really shove that soccer ball to our friend on the other side. Maybe we're playing an impromptu game of water polo and that water breaks down the layers and forms little eddies around that soccer ball. That will be turbulent flow and that is not laminar flow. Poisset's law also requires another assumption, of course, that the flow is in, uh, occurring in an enclosed space or a closed system. For example, a pipe or a blood vessel. And I've included here just the basic outline of blood vessels that you should be familiar with. Really more of a biology concept, but worth going over. We have our arteries, which go into arterioles, which go into capillaries, where most of the tissue uh, exchange of O2 and CO2 is going to occur. And then these capillaries run into venules, which eventually run into veins, which go back to our heart and our lungs. So it goes to the heart, then the lungs to be oxygenated, and then back to the arteries to be pumped out to the rest of the body. Now finally, I think it's worth going through a little practice problem that I've written up derived from the double AMC. Now this problem is a little less detailed than other problems that I've written, and that is going to be because there's very little uh, problem material actually from the double AMC on Poisset's law. However, knowing the concepts and knowing how to manipulate the variables is a very common theme on the MCAT. So if you were to see an, uh, a problem that required you to manipulate the variables in Poisset's law as such, I wouldn't be surprised. So let's go through the question that uh, uses those concepts that I've just mentioned. So feel free to pause the video right now and work through this problem by yourself. All right, assuming that you've gone through the problem, let's get to work. So if we were to increase the radius of a pipe by a factor of two while maintaining the pressure gradient. So that's gonna be an important qualifier because actually in a closed system, if we were just to increase the radius of the pipe, what would happen is the pressure would drop because when we increase the radius of some sort of pipe, we want to maintain our flow rate because that's a closed system. And in a closed system, we have a constant flow rate. So in order to do that, we drop the pressure. But if we maintain this pressure gradient, our flow rate is going to be forced to change. So let's write out our equation briefly to see how that will actually work out. So we should have this equation memorized for test day. It's not too bad. And we could even simplify it and have Q be proportional to R to the fourth and delta P and get rid of all the other constants so we can see exactly what we're looking at here. So if we increase the radius by a factor of two, we could write this as two R to the fourth, delta P. Now if we apply that exponent of four to every variable that's inside those parentheses, we can write this equation as Q is proportional to two to the fourth times R to the fourth, delta P. Now, again, we can further simplify this by taking two to the fourth, which is 16, times R to the fourth, delta P. Now notice that our Q is now 16 of our original radius that we had. So this Q is going to be 16 times that of the original Q. So our answer is D. That's it for High Yield MCAT. Feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what topic you would like to see next. Also feel free to check out my free amino acid playlist that can be found in the link below.